Hello, guys. This time I'm bringing to you a very interesting guide that is something that I have been using both for my personal and sometimes professional uh, projects as well. The idea is that you can use a Google Collab instance to host uh, models and use it as a kind of remote server, like a, even how you can use a remote machine, a remote VM to host models. So this fits really well on the journey from prototype experimentation to a production system. So it, uh, commonly what we do is that we try to develop an application, a system locally, or even a Google Collab instance, and then we are going to take it for production. For production, we probably need to uh, maybe sometimes buy hardware or rent some virtual machines to host your, your application, develop infrastructure and everything else. So uh, in the meantime, maybe in the, in the middle of the way, uh, it would be very good if you can test that MVP, that prototype uh, in a setup that is closer to production. So an application will run locally, maybe in a VM, but querying the, uh, the LLM, the model that is hosted on different server so that you can see how our application is going to scale and test if it's, let's say, robust enough when you bring it to a, a service context. So the concept is quite clear, as I said you, to you, we are going to have a kind of cloud server that is basically a Google Collab instance. It will be hosting a uh, Olama server, and then you can query it locally or remotely, uh, if it's the case, using different sources. You could be using Python script to Python notebooks or even your own terminal. So basically you are using the Google Collab instance GPUs for free to host your model models and serve it from different servers remotely. This is, can be quite useful for your testing. Maybe in my case that I use macOS, sometimes some models, they do not run very well on my system, or maybe you don't have the proper hardware. So you could be using a uh, Google Collab instance to do the have lifting of the model for you. So for this guide, the model that I will be using would be the new Gemma3 model. Google released it a few days ago, I think one or two weeks ago. This, and I chose this model because aside from being very recent, it's also very, very efficient. So it has a very good context length of 128,000 tokens. Very interesting, it also is multi-model capable, which means that it has support for inputs of text, but also image. It's very, very good for multilingual. So this is a, a, basically a very good general model. As you can see from the web, official website, it also means that uh, this model, especially for this size, it seems to be a very, very good choice of model that will be hosted in a single GPU, which is, of course, the, the context that we will be using here uh, with the Google Collab instance, uh, single GPU. Uh, it also is supported on multiple frameworks. So here I will be demonstrating on Olama, of course, because of the server, but it's also available on other frameworks. And aside from that, uh, it's also provided in different model sizes. So the 1B, the smallest one, uh, which can be quite good for testing, it doesn't have the multi-model support. So for this example here, I will be using the 4B, which is also very good, but it is small enough to run fast on the uh, on the Collab instance uh, on a small GPU and still provide some meaningful results. Uh, we can also see here on the Olama webpage, that this is already supported for Olama, as you guys saw, as you guys saw, usually they do a very good job of enabling the models fast. You can see that's also supported here in all of the sizes. And as I said, I will be using the 4B1, which is the smallest one that has multi-model support. With that being said, I think that now we can go to the actual notebook and see how it's done. Okay, so starting here, you can see this is the Google Collab instance. I'm using a T4 GPU here. And I will also, of course, give you the link in the in the comment section. You can take a look there. You can clone it and do your modifications, do your tests, and see how it goes. So at the start here, uh, I have some markdown doing the description with the description on everything that has is being done here. Uh, you can take a look later, but basically we are going to go through the notebook and that has the same information here. Okay, the T GPU that I'm using here is a T4, which is good enough uh to run this 4b gemma 3 model and it's also on the free tier of the google collab so anyone should be able to use this same uh environment that i'm using here first thing to do is just to install a llama in the google collab uh instance 
Uh, this is very easy. It's just running a simple script. Quite simple. Then we install Py and Grok. So and Grok will be the tool that we are going to use to create the tunnel so that we can access it externally, remotely. And we also start Olama, of course, that we are going to use here. We have some functions here that we, I will explain in a bit uh, as we go through them. And I'm defining here the Ngrok port. So I'm using this specific port because this is the default port that Olama uses to serve the model. So uh, in your case, if you're running this, uh, if you're running a uh, Olama server in your local machine, this is the port that is going to be used uh, for you to query. So I'm just keeping it the same. This is the default port here. First thing to do is restart the Olama server. And I'm also running a simple test to see if it's running on the specified port. So if you go up a little bit, what I'm doing here is just to run in the, just to run the Olama serve command. So uh, if you run this on your notebook, you should be running this same command here so that it can start, it can start the Olama server on your machine. So so process so that it runs on the background. And then this is a simple test to, to see if the server was started as it should be. After starting it, then I run this other function here that sets up the tunnel, the ngrok, ngrok tunnel. Uh, basically, it will create the uh, URL so that I can use it to access this Google instance uh, remotely. So I can use for my machine or your, for your, your machine. Uh, if you will be using, uh, you can also use the same URL here. And then, so you can see, quite simple, the server, the Olama server here is already started and I already have, already have a public URL that I can use to query the, the instance. Then we can finally start to do some tests here. The first one, of course, I'm going to use the 4B Gemma model and I have a default prompt here, why is the sky blue? So a very basic prompt. And the first way that I'm going to do this test is just to do it on a terminal. So let's open uh, the terminal here. And what I will do is that I will just uh, export the environment variable here. I can just copy this and on my terminal, I will print it. Okay, so this is going to set up uh, the server that I'm going to use to query the Olama model. So I have it here. And then I can just run the model. Okay, so I'm going to run this Olama run command here. If the model was not downloaded on the machine, it will just download it here. Of course, here I'm running on my local machine terminal, but the model will be, will be downloaded in the Google Collab instance, which is the server, right? So I can already write messages here. So let me use the uh, default prompt. So why, why is the sky blue, right? Okay, so you can see I'm basically running the terminal, querying the term, the model from my machine, but I'm using the server, the Google Collab server as the engine to run the model. So let's put that aside. That is the simplest one, but of course you're probably not going to uh, do everything here just to query the model from your own terminal. So something that's a little bit more realistic is that you will be querying from another system, maybe an application, a chatbot, uh, your uh, reg pipeline. Here I'm going to be simulating that on this notebook using the Olama uh, library. So I have this function here, basically it queries the, uh, the, the server and I first define a client which has the host as the public URL that we generated uh, above. I'm going to put the model here. It was already pulled. And then I can run the prompt. So if we go from the function here, it basically defines the, uh, the content of the request, the role as a user, the prompt, the one that I'm passing. And this is for the multimodal uh, part. So if I provide a path to an image, uh, it will append the image here to the body of the of the request. And here we, can, we have just basically the client that we are creating with the chat uh, function. So everything is the same and we can see the response here. Okay, response from the client and basically it's answering everything that we want. 
the other way that we can query this uh, this model is uh, since the model is multimodal, we can also query from text, but we can also query using an image. And this is what we are going to run here. Uh, let's take a look at the image. So this is a picture of me at San Francisco, and I'm going to use it to query the, the model using the Olama uh, Python SDK multimodal input. So I'm, the prompt is describe this image. I'm passing the path to the image, and it's, of course, the same gemma 4 b model. So you can see the response here, uh, which is quite good. So you can take a look, evaluate the model later, but this is how you can send the request. The other way that we can query this model is using uh, request lib. So it would be, this would be basically the most basic way to query a model. It's just building a basic HTTP request using the request library from Python, which is a basic one. And the idea is quite similar. So we also have the definition here of the uh, payload of the request. If it's going to be multimodal, if I pass a path, it will load the image uh, encoded if, as a byte, as a byte, and then base64 encoded so that I can pass to the to the model. And then it's just a regular Python request here, HTTP request. So let's run it first, only using the prompt. Okay, let me import. Okay, so here we also have streaming enabled, so it will stream the response. And we can also do the same thing using uh, multimodality. Uh, so, okay, it finished the same image here, and it's the same idea. So the prompt, model ID, the URL, and the path to the image. And then we also have the output. So something that you should be aware as some of the prerequisites is just that you, ne you need to have access to Google Colab, which is pretty straightforward. So if you pick this URL to the notebook and you clone it, you should be able to run on the T4 GPU. The other thing that you will need to have is an account on any Grok and create an authentication token. So if I go here for ngrok, you can see this is their main page. I already have an account. So if you don't have, you need to register. And after you register, you just come here on the sign side panel and click in your auth token. So here you should have your auth token. You can copy and add it to the Google Collab secrets, which you can do come here, put in this key secrets, and you can have uh, your keys here. So in my case, I'm using the ngrok authentication here, which is this one. And Google Collab already has a function that will retrieve this from your secrets here. So also very handy to do this here. Okay, so this was the basic idea, uh, basically how you can use the Google Collab instance as a free server, very efficient for your own applications. In this case, I'm using Olama because it's super simple to do it and has a bunch of very relevant models. But as you can see, basically Google Collab is going to be a, a, a server that will be accessed through HTTP requests or any other tool that is able to uh, make requests to a public URL. So you can also replace this too with other frameworks as well. And also feel, feel free to use other models than the geometry models. So I also wrote a blog post on the same topic so if you want to take a look, I will also leave the uh, link to this blog post in the comments so you can also read it. But, uh, but I'm basically explaining everything in text with some descriptions as well. You might enjoy it. So give it a try uh, and let me know if you think. So have a good one and I hope you have enjoyed. See you in the next time.